Top that trade time. Phil Flynn of Fox Business Network contributor and Alan Nuckman, the chief market strategist at BullseyeOption.com are here for our trader game. Always good to have you here. Round number one, ETF Revolutions ETF celebrating a big anniversary right now. But what has the creation of the ETF done to trading? Well, I think it's done a lot of positive things. It's lowered the cost for a lot of uh, individual investors. You can track the market in general instead of individual stock risk. Uh, it's done a ton of things. And it's interesting to me that it's only been 30 years. It feels like a lot longer since I've been trading longer than that. But uh, I think it's significant. But what I wanted to point out is that a lot of times when markets get to key levels, there has there seems to be some entry and exit and that's what we may see here at these levels with the s p at the 400 4, level and at the 200 day moving average that if it can push above this then that could be a technical signal for more money to come in so efs etfs can drive the market a little bit they can and i think etf was a fantastic market intervention uh, it created a type of a way for smaller investors to get exposure to a lot of things that they could never touch back anything. in the old days, anything. almost anything, right? And even though some of them are not all perfect, I do think they've created a lot of opportunities, even in like things like natural gas, you've got triple shorts, double shorts, you know, double longs, and you can use those uh, to actually hedge futures positions with, believe it or not. So you, you put it all together, it's a more, a precise economic tool to help control risk, and that's a good thing. Round number two, stove on or off? So there was a lot of chitter chatter about the federal government allegedly trying to ban the gas stove was not true. The true story was the government just wants stoves to be safe. But what about natural gas? Is that a trade that could flame up? You know, I think long-term natural gas looks really good. Um, one of the problems, we had a crash in natural gas prices because of the closure of one of the biggest um, liquefied natural gas uh, facilities uh, in the country because of an explosion, the Freeport LNG situation. So that created a situation where natural gas prices went down. We had one of the warmest winters on record, but big picture natural gas probably saw a low today that they might not see for many decades to come. And the reason why I say that is because the United States is now going to be the natural gas producer for the world. We're going to see the exports of liquefied natural gas hit all time highs in, in recent years. Chenier Energy is one of the big players in this space, and it's going to get bigger and bigger because the world and the energy transition is still going to need a lot of natural gas. If you look at the UNG ETF, it's trading around 850 or so. You could buy the $7 call, which is below that low for January and it's trading for about $3. So you can position yourself for the longer term. And this ETF was trading at 34 back in August. So there's a lot of upside in natural gas, but it did get people's attention, the fallacy that they were gonna ban the stoves, which was silly. All they were saying is that they have to, you know, have a little bit better ventilation and so forth. And people ran with that. But it did get people's attention to natural gas as a resource and as an opportunity. That's what I want to talk about. Round number three, Valma get in view. There are concerns that the volume of 24 hour options could cause risk to the market. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that it's no different than adding weekly options. Remember, we just used to have monthly options. And at one time, I wasn't there. But at one time, there are only calls. They added puts three years later. So it's the evolution of the options market. And I've said here time and time again that I think options are a better way to trade. And guess what? I think what it's doing is taking some volume from the E-mini S&P futures contracts because options have limited risks, number one. And number two, you can trade them in any account. You don't have to have a futures account to, to participate. So I think there are a lot of advantages. And I think, as Phil said, it's just part of the market evolution. And that's the theme of the day. More evolution is more opportunity. You know, and sometimes when you talk about market revolution, I want to take a step backwards because I think one of the things that we've lost uh, in the computerized trading when it comes to options uh, is the trading floor. And, and one of the things that I have noticed when I look at the back month options on a lot of futures, natural gas, for example, the liquidity is gone. 
And the reason I think that is to a large degree is because computers don't make markets. Now, if somebody right. goes out there and puts in a trade, there's there. But I remember back in the days of the trading floor, you know, we might have a thin options market, but I can go down there and call the floor and say, listen, I got a guy who wants to do something like this. Can you find a way to make it happen? And they would. So I think what I would recommend you know, it's to bring back some option pits. Here's your bonus round question for today. It's a fun one. Can you name the trader appearing on Business First AM who recently had a side job as a DJ? Is it Dan Deming, Scott Bauer, or Michelle Schneider? You know what? I'm going to say Bauer because Bauer is funny enough that he could probably pull that off. I say it was Michelle Schneider because she has a great radio name. The house wins again. Dan Deming served as DJ at a wedding. Dan Deming. I know Dan. No kidding. That's cool. A Star is Born. Business First AM continues right after this. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.